Okay, Tim, apologies for not getting this video to you sooner. I did have everything ready to go. I think I, I mentioned in the last video that I sort of sent to you that I did have a few other things to point out. So basically this is what I was going to point out to you. And it's kind of um, it's kind of chiming in really with what you've pointed out to me in your replies to me since that video. Uh, we're on the same page pretty much, I think. We've just, we've just come about it in different ways. Um, so just picking up from where I left off. Taking the keys, obviously, taking the keys, the KEYS from this version, the good old Arguelles version, obviously, pulling the keys out and then putting them as they are in this version, in this version. And then uh, you line up each wave spell horizontally, and um, by doing that, you get columns of ones, columns of twos, columns of threes, etc., all the way to 13. And it's arranged in the order of the wave spells, which is quite quite handy, I think, because you can learn the order of the wave spells if you need to. And when you put the keys in, you get this idea of this waveform happening. Um, frequency, vibration of some kind, um, where all where all the keys are, they they form this kind of this waveform. Similar to like a cosine wave, uh, a sine wave perhaps, some sort of frequency, some sort of resonance. I went into the idea of that shadow, serpent shadow, down the pyramid in Chichen Itza, obviously, and then that you know, there's a further sound wave when you clap in front of the pyramid. Um, so that was just intriguing to see the keys forming a pyramid, um, a wave as well, some sort of waveform. And when I first did this, when I first made this version, which I think was October last year, sometime in October last year, 2016, and and then I put the keys in, and, and I saw this waveform, it made me consider, like you have done in this in this video, with with the work you've been doing, that perhaps I should complete the waveform with if this is a sine wave if these if these waveforms are like a sine wave or going in the same direction it made me consider when I first put this in last year that perhaps I should complete it with a like a cosine wave because after all the the waveform is happening between the twos and the threes here the fives and the sixes here the eights and the nines here and the elevens and the twelves so it made me it made me consider that perhaps I should complete it, but I didn't do that because I didn't kind of have enough to go on. I didn't want to just do it for the sake of it to, to create a nice pattern, so to speak. Um, but you've kind of you've referred to this as like a DNA thing, and that that's what it made me think of. It made me think that if I if I actually did put a thing in it, it it would be a bit like a DNA spiral, perhaps. So we're definitely on the same page with that. Um, so just putting it in for now, putting in this extra waveform for now. You can just see I've done that here. I've just added it with a bit of paint. Um, what what becomes apparent is how the the colours are linked up in this version. Uh, you get the you get the yellow and white here. Yellow, white, white, yellow, yellow, white, white, yellow, and then the cosine wave is red, red, blue, blue red red blue blue and it's in keeping with this idea of you know the the reds are, are sort of linked and resonate have a relationship with the the blues and the yellows resonate with the whites and have a sort of maybe like maybe like a, a, the op the opposition idea in astrology or something like that and then you see the red sorry the blue and the red on the on the sine wave the first waveform and then the yellows and whites and then where it's a yellow here it changes to white so it becomes white and yellow yellow white same with the, the red and blue here instead of blue beginning this waveform it's it's the red and uh, the next is the blue then blue then red red blue so that, that was quite intriguing to see that the keys in this version create this um, this kind of traditional idea of the colors 
of yellow and white being resonant with each other, having some sort of special resonance with each other, some special relationship with each other, and, and the reds and the blues as well. Um, so that, that intrigued me as well. And then what also is kind of intriguing with this idea of, of completing the, the waveform is, is the numbers that they fall on. If we, you know, if we, if we, if we were to put the numbers on the columns here, um, which, which I do here, we see that the the ones, the fours, the sevens, the tens, and the thirteens don't have any keys in them, and it's the twos, the threes, the fives, the sixes, the eights, and the nines, and the elevens and the twelves that do have keys in them, and just just sort of making that a bit clearer here. You see the 1, the 4, the 7s, the 10s, the 13s don't have any keys in them. And it's kind of like, it's it's almost like this, this is kind of meant to be. It's it's um, it's in keeping with the tradition of, of, of what we are told through various researchers like Lungold and Barrios. These empty columns that don't have keys in are like... The, the foundational numbers in the in the in the wave spell in the time wave the one to thirteen sequence, um, and it's the t the two the twos and the threes that are that are linked that have some sort of resonance with each other that create this this idea of this waveform. The fives and sixes are, are linked together, the eights and the nines are linked together, and the elevens and the twelves are linked together. And it by looking at this. The, the whole number sequence it makes me consider what each of the numbers are are traditionally representative of in in the you know in our kind of uh, research that we've been doing and the research that Lungold and Barrios have done people like that and I'm just going by Lungold's uh, what he says the numbers represent one is foundation you know, two is duality, three is action, etc. And when when you when you isolate the numbers in in terms of the ones that have keys in them or the ones that have the waveform in and the ones that don't, it kind of it kind of works. It kind of fits with with where they are placed. So if we just take the ones that don't have keys in them, the ones, the fours, the sevens, the tens, and the thirteens, these are what I would call the numbers of form. You know, one is the foundation of the wave spell, uh, the one to thirteen sequence. It's traditionally, unity, the, back, the beginning. You know, the foundation. Uh, four is stability. Uh, Lungold used to refer to it as like a cube. It's the most stable of of all forms, the number four. And then you get this idea of the seven being at the centre, the top of the pyramid, the centre of the wave spell. Uh, ten is manifestation. It's it's like the carry on carry over from four this stabilizing idea becomes manifest here uh, and then 13 is completion or ascension and then we go back to one obviously um, so these, the, these, these numbers are like the form numbers for me this is what they represent and the ones that do have keys in them um, the twos, the threes, the fives, the sixes, the eights, and the nines, and the elevens and twelves. These are like these have a these have a a resonance together. These are kind of linked. They have a relationship, like a catalyzing relationship. Um, I'd call these the frequency numbers. Whereas with one, you have the foundation. Two, two is the duality and the sort of realization of separation from the one, the foundation, the wholeness, and together with three, they kind of resonate, and, and that becomes the four. And then the five and the six are linked. You know, empowerment and flow. What the stability becomes this idea of of empowerment and almost like action away from the, the stability. And flow. These these have a, a resonance together. This is why they they're linked. And then seven doesn't have any keys in it. Again, that's the top. 
and then these two have a like a, a resonance like a relationship same here as well um, so I think I think the keys what the keys pattern is trying to tell us it's trying to it's trying to explain this idea of the relationship of, of the number system the sequence of the number system it's unfolding you know especially if you if you sort of divide them into the ones that don't have keys in the ones that do have keys in um, and just going on to your idea of you know balancing the pyramid and creating these extra keys in every wave spell if we just uh, take a sort of clearer look at that I've just I've just kind of mocked one up here myself um, just taking the monkey wave spell for example just going back to the Orgueles version obviously uh, the keys are in uh, two road uh, five eagle eight flint and then at the top um, 11 crocodile in that wave spell so if we put those in you get two road five eagle eight flint and 11 crocodile I'm just going through what you went through and then if we put those in into the monkey wave spell they hit this first waveform this first part of the waveform on every color yellow blue white and red and then if we balance the pyramid with the extra keys that you've put in so we put a Y on the opposite platform the opposite step if you like of two the K on the opposite side of 11 uh, which is three obviously and then etc if we put those in if we put those keys in they're on the uh, the other side of the waveform the, you know they hit exactly this idea of this resonance and again it's the twos and the threes the fives and the sixes the eights and the nines and the elevens and the twelves I think this is what this th these keys discovering these keys or the idea of the keys because it really is just an idea I mean obviously I think it's a, it's a stretch to suggest that you know the Mayans encoded the word keys in the Zolkin because they didn't speak English you know the keys is a sort of English word and um, you know the, the, the English alphabet doesn't really have, have anything to do with Mayan culture or Aztec culture the Yucatan culture but what this what this kind of syncretism is this overlaying of different cultural structures that have resonance together obviously there are 260 days in the in the Zolkin we have two we have 26 letters in our alphabet you know there is a resonance there um, and we can syncretize and put we can overlay one on one on top of the other and come up with a kind of resonance a, a relationship between the two kind of separate uh, artifacts of, 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 of culture um, and this is what I think the finding the keys is reinforcing it's reinforcing this idea this relationship between these numbers that are linked by this waveform and the numbers that don't have keys in them there's a, you know the kind of twofold the ones that don't have any keys in them are the keys of uh, the numbers of form and structure and the ones that do have keys in a kind of fre frequency numbers the ones that carry action carry uh, you know the steps on to the next form so that's what I think about that um, it's just interesting I think you know we're, we're both pretty much on the same page I was gonna put this extra waveform in myself and I did consider it to be you know if I did that as I was visualizing doing it I thought that would be a bit like DNA and you've kind of chimed in with the same thing so it's all positive that we're kind of leading towards the same conclusions in terms of the visual nature of the Zolkin. Um we're coming up with those things independently together which is uh, you know it's, it's quite a positive thing so what else have I got here oh yeah the seasons um, when I met when I made this different version of the Zolkin, it, it occurred to me that you could split it into four I'd never, I'd never considered that before um, and we're, I'm calling them seasons because if you look um, when you split it into four what one one season begins and ends in blue 
the other begins and ends in yellow uh, begins and ends in red and then the last one is beginning and ending in white and I'd never I'd never heard of this before I'd never I'd never kind of seen it anywhere discussed that you could split it into four but you you've also mentioned that in your last video and I also found it in this book um, which goes into this idea of the burner days and it says it says here I haven't actually got this book I just found it online and you know I just googled but it says that the 260 day astrological cal calendar was traditionally divided into four 65 day periods so that kind of kind of re uh, you know reaffirmed the, the direction I was going in thought so, you know I'm onto something here so just here's looking at the blue system uh, sorry the blue season just taking a look at the blue season and it begins in a blue ends in a blue and then each of the wave spells obviously they're blue the beginning wave spell is blue the end wave spell is blue so they begin and end in blues as well and the middle wave spell has a blue in the center so I thought that was quite indicative of perhaps, you know, that you can break the calendar down into different seasons almost, you know, like an idea of uh, spring, summer, autumn, winter, those four seasons, but color coded, you know, there's a blue season that has like a blue flavor to it. Um, and the, the idea of the relationship between the colors as well, obviously blue and red kind of are meant to have resonance and opposition and harmony and, and disharmony in a certain respect. Um, when you put when you when you sort of look at the middle wave spell being red uh, each of the blue wave spells have a, a red in the middle as well and if you notice the order of the wave spells here monkey earth and night um, is, is the same as the division of, of the red and blue here you know monkey earth night monkey earth night and uh, it's the same with this one as well you've got monkey muluk night uh, monkey muluk night and, and when I discovered this pattern I thought you know that's quite interesting and it reminded me um, of this pattern this uh, I watched this talk last year and it this guy let's make it a bit closer this guy um, he's meant to be like a Mayan elder and apparently this talk is from 1977 but I have not tried to verify that yet perhaps it's not true but he talks about this cross, this emblem being really emblematic of, of, of the sort of Yucatan culture Aztec, Mayan Olmec culture, whatever um, and he says that it's com composed of this idea of the male cross I think you've seen this actually I sent it to you and I think you've watched it since and then the, the female cross here and this is like really central and if you go back to this, you can you can make it with with this with this shape. So the the cross here, the female cross here, is all blue, and then the male cross has red and blue in it. Um, so I thought that was I thought that was pretty interesting to note. You can also uh, have this configuration in in the yellow season. It works, still works in the yellow season, and the red season. You know, you see the blues instead. And, and the white season you know you get this, this same picture um, so that's about it for now Tim I think we're on the same page I think we're working towards the same kind of ideas discovering things in the in the in the calendar it's all good work it's all unraveling the mystery and um, that's about it for now oh yeah just one more thing the burner days I forgot to quickly mention the burner days this video is getting quite long now but hey ho um, if you split the seasons up like this, um, as I discovered in this book, the, these these talk about the burner days and how um, every in every calendar they had days of uh, where is it now? The four burner days were considered to to be a time of working out group karma to purify the community and to focus attention on the need for greater social cohesion. Now, I'd never heard of these before until I sort of discover this idea of the seasons and the 65 day periods I don't know if you've heard about that but the the, 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 the burner days are Ock, obviously Dog uh, Serpent, Sun and Eagle which are in obviously these wave spells um, so when you put them in when you put the burner days in as, as highlighted by those authors they're in the middle of the seasons which I thought was quite uh, 
it, you know, it matches up quite well. And uh, you also get your own personal burner days as well. So obviously you would be here and your burner day would be, uh, well, this is one of your burner days and then the next one would be uh, to read and then to flint and to night, I believe. But check that for yourself if you haven't already. Okay, so that's about it, Tim. Oh yeah, I just wanted to quickly mention, don't forget the uh, the cosmic idea of in the middle of this this calendar, the old Arguelles version, putting the keys in that we both saw that you can have yes, key, yes, key, and then in the middle of that is the eye, the eye on top of the pyramid, perhaps. <laughs> it's not the Illuminati, honest. <laughs> Anyway, that's about it from me, Tim. Um, let's keep this going. Let's keep looking at what we've both got. It's it's interesting stuff for me anyway. I don't know about anybody else, but... <laughs> they're, they're all like, oh no, it's 2012's old news now. You know, we've moved on, but, you know, it's still it's still a cultural artifact that's all keen, and it deserves uh, a lot of attention, I think, still. So that's about it. That's it, really. And uh, love to you and yours, and send me anything you discover sorry about the post not getting here but that's the way it is these days um and take care goodbye for now tim